But first, just as with any agricultural operation, success can depend on creating new consumer opportunities for the product, whether it's cheese or citrus, something we found at a citrus research center in Central California. From the cacophony of color that pleases your eye to the tantalizing tang that teases your taste buds, the various varieties of citrus that make their way to your table are like a juicy serving of sunshine. This colorful medley of citrus fruit that tempts and titillates our palates and eyes doesn't just happen. You could call this Citrus Central. Lynn Cove Research Center near Visalia, California is operated by the University of California. These 200 acres of citrus trees allow researchers to test and evaluate fruit varieties that will make their way to a commercial grower and then home to you. This has been a cutting edge facility now for many, many years. So everybody that's involved in citrus research, not only from California, but from all over the United States, from South America, from Spain, from South Africa, they all come through this facility. Weather conditions, soil quality, pests, and disease all affect the grower's bottom line and the price you pay at the market. This is a replication of approximately 200,000 acres worth of citrus grown throughout California. As a research facility, we don't want to grow everything under absolutely perfect ideal conditions. We need to deal with any issues that the farmer is going to have. So we want the temperature extremes and uh, we want to be able to provide that information back to them. The path to perfect citrus is fraught with challenges. You're interested in disease prevention. Why don't you tell me what the research facility does in that area? Pretty much everything. We're looking at, um, at uh, pre-harvest diseases, post-harvest diseases, uh, you know, fungal problems, bacterial problems. And there, you know, there's, there's blocks at this facility that are dedicated to being able to replicate a disease and follow a disease along through its, its life cycle. And much of this has to do with what goes on underground. They're also working with rootstocks. And rootstocks are the base of any good citrus tree. They're, they're the, the root system that grows into the soil, uh, is maintaining the, the cultivar variety on the tree. And they're always looking for rootstock varieties that are more... Um, forgiving of the extreme temperatures also. By identifying the hardiest rootstock, then grafting on desirable characteristics like high juice content, disease resistance, or heat tolerance, growers are able to bring more taste choices to your table or the back of your truck. All right, Tom, quite a variety here of fruit. Why don't you take us through each and every one if you can. Washington Naval Orange, the, the original. This is the variety that really, really kicked off the California citrus industry. We've got blood oranges. This is a variety called Moro. This is a variety called Sanguinelli. They're almost berry flavored. This is one of the new grapefruit pomelo hybrids. This is a variety called Buddha's Hand Citron. This is a variety we call Pink Lemonade. Researchers continue down the long and winding road that brings heartier, tastier, more colorful, and more seedless varieties of citrus to the grower and the waiting public. It all comes down to one thing. I have so many favorites. One would probably be a variety, kind of an obscure variety called honey mandarin. And it's a small piece of fruit. It's only about the size of a golf ball. It's seedy. So everybody says, well, so why do you like that variety so well? Well, it's delicious. It's absolutely a delicious piece of fruit. And I don't care that it's small. I'll eat two or three. I don't care that it's seedy. I'll spit out the seeds. And I don't care that it doesn't peel well. I'll slice it. I'm, I'm going for the flavor. 